The House will now consider the matter of public importance. I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. This year, on average, more than one woman a week has died due to domestic violence, and a woman is most likely to be killed by her male partner at home. And domestic and family violence is the principal cause of homelessness for women and children. Intimate partner violence is the leading contributor to death, disability and he ill health in Australian women aged 15 to 44. No violence and abuse against women and girls, Mr Deputy Speaker, is the end point of disrespecting women. That does not mean that all acts of disrespect against women will lead to violence but all violence against women begins there. It's the responsibility of men and boys to make the social changes to end the violence against women. If little boys see their dads disrespecting their mums, they grow up to disrespect their partners. If they see their mothers, dis if they see their mothers respected, they will grow to respect the women in their lives. But men are not just fathers, they're not just sons nor brothers, they do not belong to just one cultural community, they are also members of other social and cultural groups, including workplaces, schools, communities and the wider state. White Ribbon Day on the 25th of November is the world's largest movement of men and boys working to end men's violence towards women and girls and to promote gender, in, gender equality, healthy relationships and a new version of masculinity. And Mr Speaker, I want to say a, a most sincere and deep thanks to every member of this place today who turned up to the Speaker's garden in support of White Ribbon. And I want to urge every single male member who turned up to that event to take on the oath and make the pledge for White Ribbon. And I would like every female member to become an ambassador because we need to change attitudes to women in this place and we need to change attitudes towards women in our wider community. Part of my work as the Commonwealth, Parliamentarians, uh, Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians Chair and also as Deputy Chair uh, on the National Steering Committee this year will be around respecting women and around violence against women, not just in their homes, but at all levels of society. And in fact, when the CPA meets later this year in London, we'll be talking about violence against uh, women at all levels, particularly in the political field. And we will remember people like Jo Cox, who on the 16th of June 2006 died as a result of violence against her. As women, we face violence in all aspects of our lives, in our homes as children, in our homes as wives and partners and loved ones, and in our workplaces and on the street. And this is entirely, entirely wrong. There are women in our community, amazing women like uh, Miriam Vazadta and Van Badham, Clementine Ford, Caroline Wilson, many other women who are very high profile women in our community. And thanks to the keyboard warriors, the people who perpetrate violence on computers, they are also at risk. And these, this violence against women needs to be addressed on every level. So I want to send out a challenge to every man in this place and every man in our state that when you think about making a joke about a woman, think about how, would you, how you would feel if that joke was made about you, would that belittle you? Would that give permission to someone else to take that a step further towards violence? Because violence is a continuum and it starts, as we know, about in terms of violence and uh, in terms of power and control, and it extends to economic, <coughs> psychological, social, and then physical and sometimes sexual violence against women. And we must be vigilant in every aspect of our interactions as human beings that we do not perpetrate violence against anyone in our community, but particularly women. I have people who say to me that this is not a gendered situation, that violence against women is not really real. Domestic violence is the issue. 
I want to know why it is that we don't see the same numbers of women in our community dying from uh, violence as we see men, and we know that it is women who are the targets of this kind of abuse. So I thank, again, all members of this House for their personal work on this issue and urge them to greater efforts in the future. Thank you. I call the member for Maitland in reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I'd like to uh, thank the member for Fairfield for his very heartfelt contribution, also the member for Heathcote, and of course yourself, Mr Deputy Speaker, for your comments. Uh, this morning, as Chair of the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, and in conjunction with the Parliamentary Friends for the Prevention of Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, the White Ribbon Morning Tea was held in this place. And I think it was great to set a tone with everyone uh, from this place uh, to actually commemorate this day and to start perhaps making a plan for a stronger commitment to reducing violence against women. And I thank the Minister for her contribution in that uh, discussion and also the Chair of the Friendship Group for the Prevention of Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, uh, the Honourable Natasha McLaren-Jones. But I'd also like to thank particularly uh, Mr Raj Kumar, who was a key figure uh, in that, and his generosity and courage in sharing his story of multi-generational family violence was a very important point, I think, because it gave members the opportunity to reflect on the complexity of this situation, the fact that often these stories happen when we are not aware of them and they can be happening very close to us without an awareness that we are perhaps next door to or we're related to a, a victim of family violence. And I also want to congratulate Raj again for the White Raki event which was held at UTS, which focused on combining such a wonderful cultural event as the Raki, where brothers and sisters or uh, sisters give brothers a, um, a bracelet to protect them as they go off amongst their challenges in life and combining that with white ribbon. So, and I think that was a really hopeful moment and uh, experience for me to see young people from um, migrant communities <coughs> actually taking on this uh, tradition and giving it a new meaning, which was so much more deep. Um, I also think that we need to talk about not just the perpetrators in this debate, we need to talk about the victims as well. Uh, I met earlier today with Professor Simon Hackett, who is a world expert on sexual abuse of children by children, and he highlighted to me the issue of child perpetrators as victims, and that is why it is so important that we give uh, support to all victims of child sexual assault and also of other forms of abuse, because often without uh, adequate uh, help and support through those traumatic experiences, they go on to be perpetrators. And the earliest intervention that we can provide to perpetrators is to find them as victims and offer them help to come to a better form of behaviour and dealing with that trauma. So I thank everyone for their contribution to this debate and for their contribution to White Ribbon Day. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you. Thank you.